Hello and welcome to a second video on the residual analysis of multiple regression. In this video we'll be checking the regression assumption of constant variance. We're using the same data, data as in the last video. Uh, pulse rate data with two uh, potential predictor variables, incline and speed. We saw from the last video the regression output actually shows that they are significant uh, and this being a designed experiment, we can make uh, causal statements about the effect each variable has on the response. Uh, so last time we checked the independence assumption. To, to do that, we plot residuals versus each of the x variables in the model. And it showed, we saw that independence seems to be OK, except since there was a time aspect to the data, we also plot residuals versus time, and that was maybe a not quite independent, not as independent as we would like anyway, but not too bad. Okay, so the next video is checking the regression assumption of constant variance. When you ran your regression and asked Excel to store your residuals and make these two residual plots, it did not make a residual plot of fitted values, sorry, residuals versus fitted values for you. So you need to make that yourself. So, but the good news is, it did record a column of fitted values for you and the residuals. So let's uh, make our own. Well, by the way, we could also make plots, residual plots of uh, using standardized residuals instead of regular residuals. Uh, a lot of people prefer that. Um, the reason is we can relate this to a standard normal curve then, and we know that uh, if the residuals follow a uh, normal distribution, then the standardized residuals would follow a standard normal distribution. Uh, and we know that once you get beyond two standard deviations, we're into extreme territory, and that's why we define a standardized residual of at least two to be an outlier. That point is an outlier. Okay, so we're going to make our own scatter plot out of these two columns. Insert scatter. Okay, it's not very useful right now, but we'll clean it up. Let's get rid of the legend. Click on it once, delete. The grid lines, click on it once, delete. I know the residuals go from negative 10 to plus 10 approximately. Let's rescale, format axis, negative 10 to plus 10 by increments of 5. Let's have the x-axis cross at negative 10. Under number, let's get rid of the extra two decimal places. That looks better. Now for the fitted values, um, I don't know approximately. I can approximate where they start and end, but let's uh, highlight the values here again. And once I highlight it, down in the lower right corner of the screen, you probably have a min and max. I see 113.6, 145.87 down here, if you can see that. It's very tiny. Okay, so I'm going to start at 110 and go to 150. Right click, format axis, 110 to 150 by increments of 10 under number. Let's get rid of the extra two decimals. Okay, so I have a little bit of extra white space on the edges, but I'll easily, uh, I'll take that given that I'm using nice round numbers on my axes. Okay, let's square this plot as usual because it's a cross-sectional. Let's uh, right-click in the border area inside, format plot, area, border, solid, gray, and then I need to add axis labels under layout, axis titles, horizontal, below. Uh, we're going to call this um, fitted values. And then uh, I'll put my residual above again. Again, the reason I, I like to put it outside the plot, that's a new thing I've been doing lately, is because I could copy this whole area as a, uh, copy it and then paste it as a, like a Windows meta file, and it looks like a nice graph. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the outside border, right click, format chart, border, no line. Okay, let's add again a trend line, uh, a reference line, at zero. Now if I do that, 
line doesn't go all the way across the plot because I had some extra white space in there. So why don't I do another, uh, I'm going to, I'll take this notation over here that I used in the last video and I'll add another series for me. So this is actually fits or fitted values. Let's start at 110 and let's go to 150 and then residuals of zero. So I'm plotting two points and then I'll connect those two points. Right click, select data, add, adding a new series. X values are these two values. Y values are these two values. There we go. So I'm going to right click on those two points, format data series, marker options none, but line color solid black, line style, let's make it thinner. Again, just as a reference line. Okay, so uh, I think we're good to go in interpreting this plot. This plot, residuals versus fitted values, is primarily used to check the regression assumption of constant variance. The reason is these fitted values are actually a linear combination of all our x's in the model. In this case we only have two, incline and speed, but I've removed their, their influence, their impact here, and the leftover stuff, if there is any remaining pattern, is most likely to be some kind of a cone shape, like a, showing us non-constant variance. Okay, so I don't see it. I don't see a cone shape. Now, a secondary purpose for this plot would be to check if there's any curvature, a violation of independence. So let's right click, add trend line, go to polynomial, and you can see there is a little bit of curvature, but again, uh, what we saw when we plotted residuals versus incline is that the curvature is so minor that we should not be concerned about it. Uh, if, if I were looking at this plot, I, I see that we missed a little bit of curvature, and then you could track down which of the x variables was causing it. Turned out both x variables have a little bit of curvature going on, and that's why a little bit's shown up here. Okay, so I'll get rid of that, and uh, we're done with this video. Checking the regression assumption of constant variance. That looks fine to me because I don't see any cone shape.